Hi and welcome to Whisker Pilgrim to another review on my collection on Deanstone and this will be the last part of that collection <laughs> yeah um, today I have um, two bottles the last ones of course um, the a little hand fill bottle that you can buy at the distillery only at the distillery and uh, the instant the scenery. Fantastic. Um, I will start with uh, this bottle first. To um, <clears throat> this bottle is a 16-year-old Pedro Eximenes organic. It says it's a Finnish. It's 16 years old. It's spent its first 14 years. In uh, some form of bourbon cask, I'm not the X of first fill. They didn't really, they did tell me, but I think I just forgot it afterwards. Uh, and then it spent its last two years in the in the PX cask, basically. And uh, yeah, it's 49.6 ABV and hand fill. Yeah, the still exclusive. Um, this is the bottle, of course. There you go. Here's some of the colors. So you see, the um, two years is only giving a little bit color. That's most typically the color of a bourbon cask. They had uh, all together four different variations of this bottle. This one, the PX cask finish, uh, a bourbon barrel, a virgin oak, and an armadillo sherry. When I was there at the distillery, uh, I was a little bit too much <laughs> going around in my head. So I didn't try all the other three. I wish I did, because it would be interesting to try them. Um, yeah, but this one just... Wow, I was like, I'm going to buy this one. They're not cheap. And you, yeah, um, they cost like, yeah, like 35 pounds I paid for 20 cent liters. So that's quite a lot, because you can get sometimes a full-size bottle of it. Of a whiskey for that price as well, or if you double that price, you can get a pretty good whiskey for that. So, but this one it's fantastic. Here we go in a glass, the color as well. Uh, yeah, let's get into your nose. Mm, yeah. <laughs> It's very creamy, buttery vanilla, of course, due to the vanilla, the um, bourbon casks involved here. Those first 14 years. Mm. There's some of the oak in there, uh, a little bit syrupy, oaky. Yeah, very creamy, uh, eggy, like Italian vanilla ice cream. I've said it on a couple of occasions on some whiskies. So. Yeah. There's a lot of vanilla, maybe custard, some can say. A vanilla ice cream, creamy vanilla ice cream, or Italian ice cream. Yeah. It's very pleasant on the nose. It's sweet, of course. Uh, honey, that's very typical Deanston. Like Aaron has their pineapple, Deanston has a lot of influences on honey. So there's that one as well. Yeah. There's some kind of candy or yeah. Um, in Sweden we have these called sugar cubes candy. Basically it's some white fluffy thing that tastes sugary <laughs> like most can like most candy does. A little bit of vanilla in them, yeah. It's incredibly nice on this. And of course the sherry is there, it's not that much, but you can still get some uh, some kind of light raisin plummy thing. There is not much, a little bit heat, a little bit heat, not that much, with the black pepper and some cinnamon. And uh, coffee maybe as well, I should say. Coffee and some light, a little bit dark chocolate as well. Incredibly nice on the palate, or not the nose, 
I did confuse it on the last video, <laughs> the palette to the nose, so yeah. But now we're gonna get into the palette, so cheers! Let's go for this one now. <coughs> have some water. Um, then I'm gonna tell you about this flavor. Make you think, oh my god, you're gonna get all the flavors out. Yeah, maybe a little bit. But um, they are still there. Super, very sweet, not super sweet, but there's a lot of sweetness. Honey syrup, a little bit of chocolate and coffee as well. Um, a ginger. I, it's usually my typical taste notes, that's usually what I get. I'm still learning as I'm going. Some um, yeah, raisins or plums, I would say. Um, oaky, dry. You could also call that. Um, what are more to it? Hmm. It's really good, actually, I should just tell you that. There is some um, kind of fruity thing going on here, sweet fruity things. Dried fruits, maybe pineapple, mango, papaya. The vanilla, of course, as well. Yeah, fantastic, seriously. <clears throat> if you're ever at Deanston, try this one. The PX Cast Finish, if they still have it, I don't know. And uh, yeah. Try the other ones as well, I think they could be really interesting. I unfortunately only try this one, so yeah, that's how life is. <laughs> and now, I'm just gonna drink some water again. We're gonna go into this one the Deanston Decenery, or yeah, this one is uh, quite something. It is a distillery exclusive. You could one time order it on the website. I bought my first two bottles at the distillery when I was there, and I bought another one just to make sure I had something to stock up on. As you see, I drink whiskeys very slowly, but this one has been going quite good in my collection. I'm not the fastest drinker of whiskeys. And yeah, this bottle is only one of 1,400 bottles. My ball here is so 549, and it is a combination of um, four different casks for, from four different decades, and that's why it's called the Sunroo. So it has a cask in it that's 40 years old, all the way down to 10 years old. So it's basically, this is a 10 year old whiskey with 40 year old whiskey in it. And there, I'm gonna read to you what they have put in this fantastic one. For Let's see, because the that one is four special malts ma matured in casks over four decades come together in our fifth anniversary blend. Yeah, so it's they're celebrating their fifth anniversary because they're a very young distillery still, not as young as some new ones are, but they're not as old as many other distilleries out there in Scotland. So let's see here. Um, the first cask is from 1977. It's a whiskey refill, so it doesn't say if it's a bourbon, sherry, but it's an oak, American oak maybe, European oak maybe. Uh, the next one is an, uh, from 1982, I think, yeah, 1982, American oak. Next one is from 1996, that's a port pipe, and from 2006, a Pedro Eximines, or a P PX cask, so yeah. Seriously, just look at this. It is was quite an expensive ball, or not that expensive, I would say, due to limit limited run it had, like those 1,400. And uh, yeah, I think I paid like 115 to 119 pounds for this bottle. It is a 10 year old, so you might say, oh, that's expensive. It is, uh, well, how, old? how many percent was it? 46 point. Free ABV, but it's a limited 1,400 10-year-old whiskey with 4-year whiskey in it. I 
ask them if there's going to be like a batch ring because the um, Spanish Yorker okay, have is batch number two. Uh, they told me this will n not be any made anymore because the cast they used. They don't have any cast that are very similar to that set. So yeah, this is a limited run basically and very limited <laughs> run. Because 1,400 balls. So yeah, it is uh, kind of unique. Not maybe unique, but it's most distilleries do some anniversary thing. This one, I do appreciate that they're telling you what's in it. I like, like for example, the Glen Morangi Signet, for example, which I think is a fantastic good whiskey. Uh, it is a non age statement. You do know that there are some casks involved in that. It's between 18 years up to 30 years, I've heard. How long they're going to keep that up, I don't know. It's sometimes very expensive, that ball, but it's not the one we're going to talk about. It's maybe the same thing with the Dom or King Alexander, a whiskey which is good. A little bit too pricey for the ABV, I would say. I mean, this whiskey would have been great for in bit 46 to 48 percent ABV. It would have been fantastic. So, yeah. Anyway, let's get into the nose first and not the palate. <laughs> Here we go. A little bit dirty glass as always. My dishwasher is not that great. Mm. When, you, when you smell this one, there's the honey, but the honey here is. Uh, how should I say this? It's like I'm. It just smells so honey and uh, beautiful. I like honey to my tea, for example, and honey in certain foods. So, um, it's just wonderful honey and ginger combined. Icy sugaring, syrupy, oak. There is some black pepper to it as well. And, um, oh, yeah. Some creamy. Kind of creamy, I would say, as well, like most whiskeys I review, apparently. I would say not quite creamy, but or buttery. Very uh, like uh, toasted white bread as well. Yeah. Mm. It's just a beautiful now, seriously. I haven't done any notes on this because I felt like why don't I just try to see what I can find myself live on this video. There are some pear, I would say, pear, green fruits, pear, apple, side, cider kind of thing going on. There are some lemon palm, lemon zest or lemon palm as well. It's just beautiful, seriously. It's just beautiful. Wear a cake or, um, yeah. As well, I mean, it's just beautiful. Seriously, <laughs> shares. Now I'm gonna get into the palette. Oh. Mm. I'm gonna take one more sip. Mm. It doesn't burn. It's very, yeah, a little bit sticky, you could say. Honey, kind of sticky, with the taste, of course. Yeah, but I'm not sure that I describe this one. Ex except that it's just a. I don't want to curse on my channel, but this is just fantastic. With the F word, of course. <laughs> yeah, it is a really good whiskey. Oh. Flavors are just, mm. there's so much going on there. And yeah, I'm, I'm gonna talk more about flavors. I just wanna say it's gonna be hard to get. There, I think there are still some at the distillery. There are gonna be quite a few on the secondary market. People are gonna try to get their bucks for it. I have two more bottles of this. I'm gonna drink all of them. Say one, the last one, of course, for a more special occasion. But this one is, yeah, fantastic. I mean, that. Taste is just oh, mm, mm, 
Yeah. Pear and green apple. Some buttery toast as well. It's kind of like how the palate to the nose sometimes can be very close by and sometimes it's not. Mm. Yeah. Orange as well. Orange shock orange with dried orange and dark chocolate as well. Um, it's just fantastic, seriously. If I um, should tell you anything about these two, it's just try not try to get a sample on this if you ever are able. I know they still sell their sample pack, and I know you can get like a free centiliter sample on this one. I would highly recommend you to at least get a sample of this whiskey. It's fantastic. So yeah, and now you have the uh, seriously. Could have gone horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah. So that is my last review on my Dean's Dog collection. I have an 18 year old sample I bought a couple of weeks ago that I'm gonna be trying. Not on the review, because I'm gonna try it and then buy it if I like it. And yeah, and after that, I will maybe do a video on whiskies that I haven't reviewed from distilleries. And I bought some new balls from them. Yeah. But this is the last one on the an ocean between us and on my next video I will be doing a review there and the, but on these reviews I will only do one bottle because I think I'm gonna have a hard time getting too many flavors from different bottles there because then it'll be smoky and that's gonna be a little bit of bottles that I have from Lafroy nothing too extravagant or maybe some of them are I'm not sure if you're gonna do three or four but I'm gonna do at least three bottles and uh, yeah some of those bottles are all age statements. I have other whiskies in my collection because my first whiskey ever that really got me into was the Lafroy Quarter Cask. So yeah, I'm gonna do a review on that because so many people have, and same with, with the Triple Wood, the ten year old. But I will be doing a review, a review at least on um, Lafroy ten year old batch eight, the Cask Range edition. Uh, and a Lafroy uh, 25 year old as well, and a Lafroy 18 year old, which was sadly, sadly, and unfortunately discontinued and then replaced by other whiskies, which I don't find to my liking my palate that much. Yeah, sad. But um, yeah, take care and have a nice day, evening, wherever you are in the world. Take care.